Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you the new range mask feature available in Lightroom Classic in the Adjustment Brush, Radial Filter, and Graduated Filter tools. Now these three tools allow us to make any of these changes to local areas in our photos. For example, I could darken just this window. Range Mask allows us to further isolate our changes to just a particular range of colors or a particular range of tones in the area we define. And you'll see that it often allows us to do this very quickly with some really sophisticated masks. I'm really impressed with this tool and I've started to use it a lot. In this first example, I am going to darken this window. I'll click over here to zoom in. The first step is to roughly define the area you want to affect. So I'm just going to click and drag to make a sloppy selection here. It's okay to select more than you need, but not less. Next, I'll double click on the word effect just to reset these sliders. Now we'll come down and build the mask to tell Lightroom that I just want to affect the dark tones here, just the dark of the glass. So I'll click on Range Mask and I'll choose Luminance. Luminance is brightness and darkness, so we'll define the area based on a range of tones using the range slider. The leftmost point is pure black. The rightmost is pure white. And then everything in between these two handles will be affected. And of course, everything is being affected right now. If I type O for overlay, you see what's being affected. I'll slide the right handle to the left to say, I don't want to affect the bright tones. I only want to affect the darker tones. And you can see the red mask is shrinking back to just the darker tones. Now the red mask can be kind of hard to see. I'm going to type O for overlay just to turn that off. When you're sliding these sliders, if you hold the Alt to the Option key down as you slide, you'll get a black and white mask. Anything that's white will be fully affected. Anything that's black will not be affected. So white is on, black is off. Anything that's gray in the mask is partially affected. Mostly the window. Now I'll come up and specify what change I want to make. I want to darken, so I'll use negative exposure. Now the more dramatic my change, the more obvious the edges of my mask are going to be. So once I decide how dark I want that area to be, I'll come down to the smoothness slider. Smoothness affects how harsh the edges are. I'll hold the Alt to the Option key down so you can see the mask. Sliding smoothness to the right makes the edge very soft. Sliding it to the left makes it harsher. Seeing the black and white mask can help you understand what's going on, but make your final decisions looking at the image itself. Now I'll hit the switch on and off and you can see how quickly we were able to isolate a change just to the window. Let's go to another example and we'll take a look at using a color range mask. In this photo, I want to affect the building, the reds of the building. Now normally I would think about going down to HSL, which allows us to work on individual colors in our photo. But if I use the red sliders here, it's going to affect the building and the power pole. So I need something that's going to work locally. I also want to be able to apply different changes than I can make with HSL. I can only affect brightness and darkness, saturation, and then the hue or specific color or shade of red here with HSL. Well, I want to add more clarity into the red areas. I can't do that with HSL. So instead, we could use the adjustment brush as I just did, but let's use the graduated filter. I'm going to click, hold, and drag from left to right here. Everything to the left of where I dragged will be affected. I'll double click on Effect and I'll get back to the sliders here, but we'll work on the range mask. I'll click on the drop down and this time I'll choose Color. Next I need to tell Lightroom which colors I want to affect. So I'll click on the eyedropper and I'll sample the colors. Now I can click and let go and Lightroom will sample right underneath the bottom of the eyedropper. But as this message says, it can often be more effective to click, hold, and drag to define a larger sample area. We can add up to four sample points. To add another, hold the Shift key down, then click or click, hold, and drag. Now, if you want to remove a sample point, right now there's no way to do that directly. You would simply click, hold, and drag to define a new one, 
and the ones you've already laid down will be deleted. So I'll hold the Shift key down and add another one back over here. Now I'll come over to the Amount slider and I'll hold the Alt to the Option key down as I slide it to see the mask. Now if I move to the right, I'll be affecting a wider range of colors. If I move to the left, I'll be affecting a narrower range. So I'm able to isolate the building very nicely. There's a little bit at the bottom that I'll erase, but once I have the amount set, I'll make my changes. I'll add some clarity. I'll brighten it up a little bit. Maybe I'll shift the white balance away from yellow towards blue, and I'll add some saturation. Now, I was affecting some areas I didn't mean to, so I'll grab the brush within the graduated filter, and I'll type O for overlay. Then I'll hold the Alt to the Option key down to grab the Erase brush, and I'll erase so I can erase from a range mask. At this point, you can't brush to add to a range mask. All right, I'll type O for overlay, and I'll click back on the graduated filter tool to put it away. Finally, I want to encourage you to think about it for situations where you have mixed lighting, and also where you want to affect a color or a range of tones throughout a photo. Thank you to David Cox for giving me permission to use this photo. The white balance on the front of the bridge looks great. It's very neutral, but these other areas being lit by different light sources are very yellow. So I want to shift the white balance on just the yellow areas of this photo. Since I want to affect the entire photo, I'll grab the graduated filter and I'll click, hold, and drag from left to right outside of the photo. So everything to the left of where I dragged is fully affected. So the entire photo. Now I'll come down to Range Mask, choose Color, grab the eyedropper. By the way, if you forget to grab the eyedropper and you click and drag to define a color, you're going to get a second filter. That happens to me all the time. If that happens to you, hit the Delete key to delete the second filter. Click on the pin for the first one to make it active, grab the eyedropper, and then click, hold, and drag to define sample areas. I'll hold the Shift key down, and I'll click, hold, and drag up there as well. Now I can come up to the temperature slider. Let me double click on exposure to reset that. And I'll slide the temperature slider away from yellow towards blue. Notice that it's affected the white balance of the yellow areas throughout the photo. I forgot to show you the mask here. I'll hold the Alt to the Option key down. And actually, let's make this mask tighter. I might even do another adjustment with the adjustment brush to affect the areas that are still too yellow. So as you can see, Range Mask is a great new feature available in Lightroom Classic. I think the more you use it, the more applications you'll find for it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to show your support and to hear about new video tutorials. While you're at it, subscribe to my newsletter on laurashu.com to get a free training video download and more. I'm Laura Shue.